history of Colorado Springs is really the history of water all the way back to 1871 when General Palmer put the first stakes in the intersection of Cascade and Pikes Peak. That same year, water was the first thing that he commissioned his Colorado Springs company to accomplish. One of the, the largest challenges for Colorado Springs when it comes to water supply is that we're the largest major city in Colorado and along the Front Range that's not positioned uh, near a major river or a major water source. Well, our system spans over 11 counties. It's huge. It goes all over the place. And one of the challenges that we have is most of our source water comes from only a couple of places. 80% of the surface water supply is on the west slope and 20% is on the east slope. And then when you take a look at population, it's exactly the opposite. 80% of the people are on the east slope, 20% of the people are on the west slope. Colorado is unique in that it's known as a headwater state in the fact that many rivers actually start here. So it seems like we should have plenty of water for what everyone wants to use that water for. There's a vast amount of water that we actually have to pass on. So we might get to use a certain portion of that, but a lot of it has to go downstream, especially the Colorado River. It goes through seven states and all the way down to Mexico. Water resource planning 100 years ago involved really going to the stream, digging a ditch, trying to get water physically delivered. They brought water from Fountain Creek through what is old Colorado City up to his development of Colorado Springs. An interesting fact is that that water was not brought for drinking or for domestic purposes. It was actually brought for irrigation. See, Palmer was a developer, and he was a good developer, and he knew that he needed to have irrigated land, cottonwood trees, and the like, to be able to sell lots in this new town, which he also called his Little London. Colorado Springs is a semi-arid climate. We only get 16 inches of precipitation on average per year. And when people moved to Colorado Springs and started to settle here, they built landscapes that reflected where they came from. There were different crises in those early years. There were grasshopper plagues. There were other droughts and things like that. And the citizens began to band together to say, we need water. They were bringing drinking water in wagons for a time. Fire protection consisted of huge cisterns placed throughout the small city to be able to fight fires really with buckets. And then as they began to grow, they started moving further and further west and began to go up the, the slopes of Pikes Peak to bring water from Pikes Peak to Colorado Springs. Between 1880 and 1890, the population of Colorado Springs more than doubled and they realized that they needed to secure more supply. So they went to the south slope of Pikes Peak in the Beaver Creek Basin. There they built a system of seven reservoirs. Those systems are still used today. We have the five reservoirs on the south slope and then the two reservoirs on the Ruxton system. We're also able to generate uh, hydroelectric power. Hydropower is a wonderful uh, resource because it's, it's very clean, it's extremely efficient. Um, the units actually last indefinitely. They're very easy to maintain. There's no fuel burned, no emissions created. It's, it's the best power source, I think, known to man. In the 1930s, Colorado Springs went onto the North Slope and began to build the North Slope system. The North Slope system comprises of Crystal, South Catamount, and North Catamount reservoirs. And then finally, the, the major element of the local system is Rampart Reservoir, and it was built in the late 1960s. The North Slope system itself really only yields about 5% of our annual yield, but the value of it is that it is storage for our Blue River system. The catalyst for the Blue River system was the Air Force Academy and getting the Air Force Academy located in Colorado Springs. The Blue River system is our first Trans Mountain system. It's located along Hoosier Pass. We collect water from the north side of Hoosier Pass, divert it under Hoosier Pass into Montgomery Reservoir, and then from Montgomery Reservoir, we have a pipeline all the way to deliver water to the north slope of Pikes Peak. That system was embroiled in a lot of controversy with Colorado Springs, Denver, the West Slope, and even the federal government through the Bureau of Reclamation. Legend has it that uh, 
Ike Eisenhower actually personally intervened in that process. President Eisenhower would come to Denver. His wife, Mamie, was from Denver, and he would come up into this area to fish, and there were meetings in his mother-in-law's kitchen to help negotiate. From that, we looked again to the mountains. We looked to uh, the home stake system. Water is diverted out of the Eagle watershed and stored in Homestake Reservoir. The water is conveyed through a five and a half mile tunnel to Turquoise Reservoir. Water is moved through a pipeline down to Twin Lakes Reservoir. And then from Twin Lakes, water is piped all the way through the Otero Pump Station and on to both Rampart Reservoir for Colorado Springs, Spenny Mountain Reservoir for the city of Aurora. Then in the 1970s, Colorado Springs purchased controlling interest in a water rate called the Twin Lakes Water Rate. That's a Trans Mountain project that was actually built back in the 1930s by a bunch of farmers in the Arkansas Valley who were using it to irrigate land down by Ordway, Colorado. Colorado Springs bought that interest when it came on the market and that Twin Lakes system is one of our bread and butter systems now. It provides the best yield for us. The Frying Pan Arkansas Project is a regional project that benefits southeastern Colorado. The water rights are held by the Southeastern Colorado Water Conservancy District. The facilities are, are, were built and they're maintained by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. Water is diverted out of the Frying Pan watershed near Aspen through the Boosted Tunnel into Turquoise Reservoir. The Frying Pan Arkansas Project water is stored in Turquoise Reservoir, Twin Lakes Reservoir, and Pueblo Reservoir. Colorado Springs has about a 17% share of that entire project that we can use in our system. Because Trans Mountain Water is reusable and we can move it back into our system through exchanges, we're actually able to take water that we've diverted from a West Slope system and use it over two times close to two and a half times before it's used to extinction. You can sort of think of a water exchange like a bank account. You would deposit your money physically at your bank location and then maybe two weeks later, pull it out of an ATM in another part of town with no net loss and no impacts to anyone else. A great example of how we can effectuate these trades or exchanges is the Colorado Canal System. It was a purchase of agricultural water rights. Colorado Springs was able to acquire controlling interest in the Colorado Canal Companies, which included Lake Henry and Lake Meredith. Now those storage vessels in the Arkansas Valley help us to manage our water supplies and then we can use those to help us trade water back up to Pueblo Reservoir or even into the upper mountains to bring through our other systems. The southern delivery system begins at Pueblo Reservoir, which is south and downhill of Colorado Springs, about 50 miles. So we have a pipe and three pump stations that push the water into our community, then it goes through a treatment plant and out into uh, our distribution system, which serves our customers. I believe one of the biggest challenges we faced in implementing the southern delivery system was securing the support of our stakeholders. We had so many different interested parties in what we were doing on Southern Delivery and trying to resolve all of the concerns that so many different stakeholders had to demonstrate the, to each of them that we could implement Southern Delivery while addressing their concerns and achieve our outcome, which was to secure a water supply for decades for the Colorado Springs community. A watershed is a land area that drains water down to a specific point. Now that may be a small area such as a couple square miles that will drain down to uh, a creek where you have a favorite fishing hole or it may be as big as the entire Colorado River drainage that will drain several states and drain all the way down to the Sea of Cortez. My feeling as the forest program manager, the biggest threat that we face in our, with our watersheds is the risk of wildfire. And now we're seeing the effects of stomping every fire out. Our forests are overgrown. Um, the health of the, the watersheds is very moderate to poor in, in most locations. It really is kind of a, a, a large effort to try and bring a lot of these primary key watersheds back into a more natural state. 
but due to the lot of work through our force program managers in our in our force program planning group there's a lot of reduction and some of the force health is coming back planning for our water future has never really stopped since the formation of the, this area in Colorado Springs water planning has been at the forefront of so many leaders thinking and we're carrying that legacy forward today. We see other communities in the region struggling with poor water quality or not enough water supply. And we've really been fortunate in our planning to secure a sustainable supply for our community. The planning that goes on today is really shifting from the appropriation of water where you're taking that first use out of the stream to a reallocation of how we're using the water we have in our streams. And that's changed in a whole bunch of ways. We have a much more dynamic system that recognizes the multiple uses we have for water. It appreciates the environmental component of water use, the ag component, the municipal component, reusing water, all those different things that we just didn't think about a long time ago, but have become a necessity as a population has grown in the state. So when we are able to stretch our uh, water supplies that we have by using it more effectively, reducing waste, and increasing conservation, then we're able to maintain our quality of life and still meet our needs. The future of water in Colorado is going to rely on projects that serve more than one purpose. We have a very complex, really cool system that gives water here to its citizens. And it's amazing that people pay as little as they do for the amount of work that goes into making sure that we have enough water. We're always looking for ways to deliver water more efficiently, more effectively, and at the lowest cost. In every generation, leaders in our community rose up, banded together, and in many cases made extremely difficult decisions for one purpose, and that's to bring more water. Water not just for themselves, but for their children and for their children's children.